Today, we're going to talk about the Model Context Protocols MCP. So it's an open standard aiming to unify how AI models connect to external capabilities like data sources, APIs, software functions. If you build a tool for a, a specific task in ChatGPT, it won't work with another in Claude or Gemini. It's like having different incompatible charging ports for every device. So that brings us to the idea that the model context protocol, like the example, think of MCP like a USB-C port for AI applications. By looking into the general architecture, you can see that it basically follows a client server architecture where a host application can connect to multiple servers. You can see a host here. It's going to be like cloud or IDs and tools. Using the MCP protocol, you can connect to MCP server A, which has the data stored in the local system. You can also connect to the model server C, which uses APIs that call the external resources from the internet to get the data you want for this specific server. You can see the definition here. The MCP hosts are programs like Cloud Desktop, IDS, or AI tools that want to access data through MCP. The clients will be the connections with the server. MCP servers are lightweight programs that each expose specific capabilities through the standardized model context protocol. Local data sources will be the computer's files, database services, and MCP servers can securely access these. Remote services will be the internet APIs, something like that. Today, we're going to look at their examples of building a server. We're going to use the tutorial to build a simple MCP weather server and connect it to a host, Claude, for desktop. What we'll be building, we're going to fetch the forecast and severe weather alerts using MCP to solve that. So we'll build a server that exposes two tools, get alerts, and get forecast. Here are the core MCP concepts we're going to know. First, we're going to have the resource, which is the data, like file contents. The tools, which is another important thing, is the functions that can be called by the LM. And then we have the prompts. Those prompts are pre written templates that help users accomplish specific tasks. OK, so we're going to use Python for the illustration. First, what we're going to do is set up the environment. So I think it's using the UV. In case you guys don't know what is UV, let's take a look. UV is an extremely fast Python package and project manager written in Rust. So you can see from this comparison, it is significantly faster than Poetry, PDM, and PIP Sync. It's basically a single tool to replace PIP, PIP tools, PIPX, Poetry, PN, etc., and more. So it's 10 to 100x faster than PIP. So I think this is very awesome. So next, we're going to use these curl commands to basically install the UV first. Next, we're going to create and set up our project. So first, what we're going to do is create a new directory for our projects. And we're going to go to the weather directory. And we create the virtual environment and activate it. We install the dependencies and create our server file. So let's go ahead and do that. OK, so first, we're going to create a new directory for our project. And then we're going to go to the weather folder. And then we're going to create an environment. And we activate this. We're going to install the dependencies using the UV command. Here's the working directories. We can see the files here. And we can check the Python version, the main function, the PyProject. So this is the weather server we're going to implement with. All right, next. We're going to build our server. So we import the package and set up the instance at the top of the weather file. So basically what it does is to initialize the, the fast MCP server and give it a name as weather. Then it defines some constants. In this case, this is the weather API URL we're going to make the request to later. And the user agent will be the weather app 1.0. I guess the name it gives to the server, I think. So let's copy paste this. Next, we're going to do the helper functions. So for the helper functions, it's basically querying and formatting the data from the National Weather Service API. When I first look into this function, you see there's an async function. And also, I think inside of the async function, it has a wait. So what does this mean? So this means that the functions can do the things asynchronously. It allows the server to handle other tasks while waiting for the response for this specific function. It's very cool to utilize the resources like increase the efficiency of the server. And also, you can see the format alert. This is a function to format the data from the API to a string. All right, let's copy this. Next, we're going to implement the tool execution. So these two tools are actually executing the logic for each tool. So these two tools called the get alerts and get forecast. As we saw earlier, these guys are also async functions. 
which will just await for the API response from the server, external weather server. So basically the alerts function, you see it requires a state. So a state is a two letter US state code. And you can see that it basically fills in the URL of the you know weather API fills in the state and then sends the request to the you know server and gets the response. The alerts will be formatted using the previous function to get the string. And for the get forecast for the model, it requests latitude and longitude and returns a string as well. So similarly, it will fill in the URL, getting the latitude and longitude. So you might think about where do we get the latitude or longitude? Actually, those guys are from the large language model itself. So it's from the training data in the large language model. So that's why it's very, maybe confusing to some point. So once you got those data, you make a request to the URL, and then you basically format the data into a specific string format. All right, let's copy this. Then the next thing is to run the server initializing using the main function. We're going to use the memcp run to do that. Now we're going to test our server with cloud for desktop. So we're going to find this JSON file and configure the server. So let me check where's my, okay. We're going to find this JSON configuration. So we're going to create a, this Claude a desktop a config, JSON. Then we're going to open it using the text editor to open this JSON and empty file. And then what we're going to do is to copy this command to it. So from the server, what we're going to do is to change this and this. I think I made a mistake. I just typed the server like Python script here, but actually I, we don't need that. So let's de delete that and save the file and restart the Claude and see what's going on here. So yeah, we got two MCP tools available right now. Let's see what's going on here. So we have the get alerts, get the weather alerts, get the state and from the server weather, uh, get forecast. Yeah. So let's test out some questions like what is the weather in New York? Okay. So it asks for connection to the MCP server. So this is very nice, like to have the safety concerns about that. Yes, we can allow for this chat. So it gets the latitude and the longitude from the model itself. I think from the training data for the New York City. Okay. And it's also going to use alerts weather. So it gets the state of the New York City. It's like NY and to check the alerts there. All right, we can see that it comes like this afternoon. It's going to be 47 BBFF with rain likely and cloudy conditions. Tonight will be the 39 GBF with rain expected. And Saturday, Sunday, and weather alerts, there are winter weather advisories in effect for some parts of New York State. Okay? New York City area itself doesn't have any specific alert. Um, that's very interesting. Let me check the weather. Okay, it's 46 and this is 47. It's pretty much the same. About tonight, it's 39, which is correct. Not bad. Okay. All right, so let's recap. We basically covered the introduction of the model context protocol and what it is and why we're going to use it. And then we just developed a server using the weather server example to show you guys how to define those tools and functions to build up the server. And finally, we run that. We configured the configuration for the cloud for desktop. And then we finally tested the questions in the cloud for desktop to see if it's working for the MCP. So. I'm so excited to looking forward to the future updates for that. Some of the, you know, drawbacks, for example, the hallucinations and errors, like what if the cloud hallucinates the wrong state or the nonsense coordinates? So it may get the wrong information from the training data. So that's very important to keep in mind that it can make mistakes. And also the real world applications are very complicated and not just one or two, you know, functions. The large language models like the cloud may be very tough to pick the correct tools for the specific task. So it's going to be introducing some problems on that. That's pretty much about it. It's your first MCP server built and hope you guys enjoy it and learn from it. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel. Leave a comment if you have any questions and suggestions for the future videos. See you in the next one.